Today we're going to be talking about gratitude. Gratitude, the art of saying thank you. This is something that we as Christians sometimes miss the mark. When was the last time you said thank you to people, to your family, for stuff that they do to you, stuff that they do for you? When was the last time that you said thank you to God? It's something that we often forget to do. Just a simple thing as showing gratitude, showing love and appreciation for those who love and appreciate us. Simply saying thank you opens a doorway for relationship, for friendship, for building up that relationship so that it, it becomes tight. It enables a bond to be developed and strengthened between two parties. Simply saying thank you can do wonders. But how often do we say thank you? How often do we actually take the time and express gratitude and appreciation to those who love us, to those who care for us, to those who look out for us, try to help us here and there? When was the last time you said thank you to your mother, your father, your brother or sister, or even friends that you would consider close to you? When was the last time you said thank you to your wife for cooking food for you? When was the last time you said thank you to your husband for all that he does? When was the last time you said thank you to God for being so good? This is something that we can be sorely lacking in our lives because we live in a very selfish world. And it has always been selfish. If you have your Bibles with you, I encourage you to turn to Luke chapter 17. Reading from verse 11. A lot of you will know the story. And it's a story about the 10 lepers that were cleansed. And it's a beautiful story of how Jesus heals 10 people, but how gratitude gets you a lot further. If you have a Bible, Luke chapter 17, reading from verse 11, it says, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. There is so much in the small snippet of text that we, we won't really have enough time to go through everything. But what is the main thing that Jesus is highlighting here? Reading verse 17, Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Here we have the story of Jesus just walking to Jerusalem and he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Now in Israel, there's a, it, that, that pathway was a well-trodden pathway, but it wasn't necessarily a short pathway. It was a long way to go from Galilee and Samaria straight to Jerusalem. As he was entering a certain village, he met 10 people who were lepers. Now, leprosy was a very debilitating disease. If anyone was leprous, they were deemed unclean under the law. No one was to associate with them. No one was to be with them. No one was to even touch them or be associated with them in any way. 
They were essentially outcasts and people who were lepers lived terrible, isolated lives. Imagine being, not being able to go to the market because if you were to show yourself that you are lepers, people would abandon you. They would not even try to serve you, to try to help you, to try and even be friendly with you. They would be hostile, telling you to get away, get away, don't even come near me. They would treat you like an outcast. And sometimes we can be like that in this world today. So maybe you are being treated as a leper today. Maybe no one wants to be with you. Nobody wants to talk with you. Nobody wants to promote you. Nobody seems to be noticing you. Maybe in your own way, you are a leper. You know what that feels like. You know how the loneliness can creep up in your heart and you don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. You don't know who to turn to. What do we do in times like that? It can be a very painful place to be. These lepers ended up having an encounter with Jesus. And Jesus, this is something so interesting about Jesus. At this time, they ask him, have mercy on us. Essentially, they're asking Jesus for healing, to be finally free of the thing that has been plaguing them, the thing that has been holding them back. And Jesus, he didn't even touch them. I want you to look at this. In verse 14, he says, when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. So imagine, they simply went on the word of the Lord. They simply went on whatever Jesus said. And it was so, this is what the Bible says, and it was so that as they went, they were cleansed. So already they had faith that whatever Jesus says will be done. Do you have that kind of faith in God that whatever he has said, it shall be done? When the Bible says that by your stripes you are healed, do you have faith that it is as, it, as he says it is? When the Bible says, that he shall work all things according to your good because you love God and because you are called according to his purpose. Do you really believe that? Do you believe as he says? When the Bible says that you are chosen, that you are God's masterpiece, do you really believe that? Do you believe the word of the Lord? These men clearly did because Jesus simply said, go and show yourselves to the priest, which is what was customary at the time. The priest would declare you clean or unclean, especially when you had leprosy. And if you had leprosy and were healed from leprosy, the priest would declare you clean. Now, that's why Jesus says, go and show yourselves to the priests. They had the faith that as they went on the word of the Lord, that they would be healed. And it was so, God always sticks to his word. We serve a God who never backs down. He is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Whatever God says goes. God cannot lie. I will repeat that again. God cannot lie. What he says goes. If he says you are blessed, you are blessed. If he says you are healthy, you are healthy. If he says as I am, so are you in this world, it is so. If he says that you are his child, you are his child. And nothing can change that. Absolutely nothing can change that. No devil in hell, no family member, no boss that might be trying to push you down. If God says you are blessed and you are his, there is no one who can change that reality. What God has pronounced on your life, blessing instead of cursing, favor it shall come to pass that is the god that we serve whatever he says goes and nobody can change that now a lot of you know that god has done things in your life look back in your life think about all the times that god has brought you through Sometimes God simply brought you through 
sometimes God brought you out better than you were before. Throughout your life, you can count on many instances where you know that if it had not been for the Lord, who was on my side, surely I would have perished. Have you ever had that in your life? Can you think of a moment or a situation in your life where you didn't know if you were going to make it? You didn't know if you were going to be able to pay that rent. You didn't know if you were going to get that job. You didn't know if your children were going to turn out right. You didn't know what was going to happen next. But you put your faith and your trust in God. You prayed, believed and trusted in Him. You believed in His word that He was going to do exactly what He was going to do. And then God does a miracle. God brings you through. He opens the door. He closes other doors. You got the job. Your children turned out fine. Things worked out for you. What do you do after that? That's the thing. What do you do after that? In this case here with the ten lepers. As it was so, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. When God did something for you, how many of you returned to Jesus to give glory to Him? Isn't that a question? How many of you returned back to Jesus to give glory to Him? When God made the way, when God healed you, when God delivered you, when God opened the door, when God closed the door, when He made the business deal happen, when He made sure that your children turned out right, did you go back to Jesus to give Him glory and to give Him thanks? This is something we as Christians are all guilty of. We pray so hard, we fast, we pray and we ask God, God, we need you to do this. God, I need you to ensure that this appointment goes well. God, I need to make sure that this happens right. And God does it for us. God heals the person. God restores that relationship. God ensures things work out for you. And then when that happens, we just say, Okay, that's good. That's great. How many of you actually say thank you, Jesus? How many of you remembered the prayers that you prayed? Hannah, when, he was, when she was praying for her baby, prayed long and hard to the point where Eli, the priest, thought that she was drunk. And when she got the baby, she gave the baby, Samuel, to the Lord. How many of us, when God does something incredible for us, go back to God and simply say thank you? Simple gratitude is something that is sorely lacking in the church and in Christians today. I encourage you, Christian, go back to God and say thank you for what He has done for you. There is so much that He has done for you. There is so much that God does for you on a daily basis. Firstly, you have woken up today healthy and whole. Secondly, if you are watching this video, you have eyes to see this video. If you are hearing this video or if you are hearing this podcast, thank God that you have ears to hear. Thank God that you are well. Thank God that you are alive. Whatever you have in your situation right now, a house over your head, a car, a good family, good finances or the provision of finances whenever you need it. There is so much for us to be grateful for, but we have become so used to to the miracles of God that we take full advantage of it and we don't acknowledge God's providence over our life. Tomorrow is not promised. James tells us that tomorrow is not promised. It is arrogant for us to always say that we have tomorrow. We don't know what's going to, have to, what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what will happen. But God is in the future. He wakes us up. He ensures that we have this air to breathe. He ensures that our lives end up being fruitful. 
He is the one who ensures that we are protected, that we are healthy, that we are strong, that we are whole, that He preserves us despite our difficulty, that whatever problem comes our way, He gives us the strength, the peace, the guidance to get through it. He is the one to ensure that we are living the lives we are living today. Some of you are in trials right now. Some of you are in problems. And I know that sometimes you might feel that there's nothing really to be thankful for. Just thank God that you are awake, that you are alive, that He's with you, that He's strengthening you and helping you and giving you the guidance to overtake whatever might be coming up against you. Do we go and give thanks to God when He comes through for us? A lot of us don't. A lot of us are like the nine lepers who go on the word of the Lord, God does his but, and we just carry on. We carry on treating God like he's our servant. Have you been treating God like that? Only when there's trouble, only when there's a problem, you run to God. Only when things are bad, when things are rough, when you don't have enough money when you when things are going wrong that's the only time that you run to God asking and praying for his assistance but when things are going right when things are all right that's when you stop praying that's when you stop fasting that's when you stop talking to God that's when you start thinking oh look at this life that I have built look at this life that I have constructed for myself I got this car by myself I got this house by myself it's so easy to forget that when you were getting that car, you didn't know if a loan was going to come through and you prayed at night to God that the things would come through and God did what he needed to do. He gave you the favor. He gave you the grace for you to get that car and then you forget and you think that it was you. God, I need this business deal. I need this contract to go through. God ensures that it, that it happens. He provides for you. He makes this contract go through and then you think to yourself, no, you know what? I did the negotiations. I did everything myself. I got the business contracts myself. When we don't give thanks, pride comes in. When we don't recognize that every day and everything that we have today comes from God, we end up becoming arrogant and prideful, thinking that I got everything myself. And when you come to a place of pride get ready to fall because when God is not in it anymore everything falls apart everything falls apart the moment you forget God the moment you think that you did everything yourself the moment you think that God's providence was actually your hands that's when you will fall that's when things will start going wrong. That's when your complacency will end up being your downfall. And when things go bad, when things get wrong, when things aren't working out for you, that's when all of a sudden you remember God. You remember God and you run back to Him and you think that, you know what, I need to get back to God. Why is it that it is only in bad times that we think about God? Why is it that it's only in the bad times when we run to God, when we humble ourselves at His feet, when we prostrate ourselves towards God, asking God, help us. And even if you don't help me, just be with me, support me. Your presence is enough. It's amazing how in bad times, when we are ungrateful, we end up remembering how good God is. Sometimes that's why God allows trouble to come into your life because you need to get your head straight. You need to remember that it's because of God that you have everything. It is because of God that you are alive today. It is because of God that you have everything that you have today. And there is so much to be grateful for. You just have gotten so used to it that you've become ungrateful for it. And you will only realize that you should have been grateful for it when it's lost, when it's gone. Many of you think of loved ones, loved ones that have passed on. Maybe it's your parents, your grandparents, friends, even pets too. When they pass on, that's when you think, you know what, maybe I should have treated them better. Maybe I should have talked to them more often. Maybe I should have said thank you to them for what they've done. Maybe I should have said I love you more often. 
It is only in the times when people or things are gone that we end up realizing that we've taken advantage of it, that we weren't really grateful for it. Let us not get to that point. Let us be like the one leper who saw that when God moved on his behalf, he returned and with a loud voice glorified God, fell down on his face and feet and gave God thanks. Let us be like that. When God comes through for us, the first thing we need to do is say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I know that was you. At the very first moment where you can, you give praise. You give glory to God. You give what is due to Him because it's only because of God we are alive. It is only because of God that we are healthy today. It is only because of God that you have the success that you have. It is only because of God that the doors have been opened for you, that you are where you are right now. It is only because of God. Some of you may think that I'm not really in a good place right now. I'm trying to get somewhere. It is only because of God that where you are right now is not where you're going to end up. It is only because of God that he will lift you out from the place that you are at right now and put you in a better place. It is only because of God that you will not die in your sin because Jesus Christ went to the cross for your sins. He died on the cross for your sins so that you could be reconciled to God. It is only because of Him that by His body that was broken you could be healed. It is only by His blood that was shed that all your sins could be forgiven so that you can stand holy and righteous before God the Father. It is only because of Him that alone is enough to give Him thanks. That alone is enough to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that I'm alive. Thank you that I have what I have. We live in a very selfish world. This world doesn't want to express gratitude. This world doesn't want to say thank you. We are so entitled. We think things are owed to us. My friend, nothing is owed to you. The only thing that is owed to you is death from your sins. That is the only thing that is owed to you, that is rightfully owed to you. Yet, God in his infinite love, mercy and righteousness sent his own son to die on a cross so that you could get what you don't deserve. Reconciliation with God, to take the place of Christ in the heavenlies, where you can stand before God, righteous, pleasing, and perfect towards Him. That's something to be very thankful for. We are entitled to nothing. Yet, God in His goodness and in His wisdom gives us whatever we need to get through this life. We really take God for granted. How much has God done for you? Think back in your life. All of that was not you. The doors that opened was not you. The car that you got was not you. The house that you got that was the best property on the market that you got at a good rate, that was not you. The fact that you got kids that love you, that support you, that was not you. The things that you have in your life right now, it's not you. It was God who provided, it was God who made sure that you had everything that you need to succeed. To succeed in glorifying God. That's what we're here for. We're here to give glory to God, to fear God and to keep all His commandments. That is the meaning of life. How much we take God for granted. He's protecting us, He's preserving us. We don't see the accidents that God has saved us from. We don't see the potential dangerous situations that God saves us from. God does a lot for us. And we need to have an attitude of gratitude. Thanking God for everything that He does for us that we know. Even the stuff that we don't know. One day when we die and we go to heaven, we might see how God protected us from so many things that we didn't even see. It is over there that we will probably be most grateful. But let's start now. Enter his gates 
with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Give thanks to God. Because when we give thanks to God, we realize two things. One, I am not in control. But two, he is in control. When we realize we are not in control, it humbles us. It humbles us and it makes sure that we don't let any root of pride come into our hearts. Because we realize that everything I have today is because of God and God alone. Whatever he has given me, he can take it away very easily. But everything I have right now, I recognize, comes from God. And I will give him thanks. And I will give him praise for it. The most amazing thing about giving thanks is we recognize that God is in control and that He is good. He is so good. When we see what God has been doing for us, when we really open our eyes and we see how God has blessed us in our own environments, in our own spheres of life, we can see how God has blessed us. We recognize that He is in control. We recognize that He is the one protecting us. And we recognize that truly God is on our side. We really need to learn to say thank you more often. Truly, it's the most powerful thing that we can do to humble ourselves and to give thanks and praise to God. To honor God, we simply say thank you. And I encourage you that whenever you pray in the morning or the evening, whenever you pray, start your prayer with thanksgiving. Just thank God for five things every day. Here's five things that I usually thank God for every day. Thank you, God, that I am awake. Thank you, God, that I am alive. Thank you, God, for this day that you have given to us, that it's going to be fruitful, that it's going to be blessed. Thank you, God, that you are with me, that whatever problem I might face today, you'll give me the strength, the wisdom, and the peace to deal with it. And then you can thank God for other things. Thank you for my life. Thank you that I'm able to see. Thank you that I'm able to hear. Thank you that I'm able to walk. Thank you thank you that I'm able to talk. Thank you, God, that I have a wonderful family. Thank you, God, that I have a car to get to work. Thank you, Lord, that I have a house over my head. Thank you, God, that my grandparents are still alive. Thank you, God, that my children are working well. Thank you, O oh God, that I'm living in a first world country. Thank you, God, that despite living in a third world country, you are providing for me and protecting for me. Thank you, O oh God, that you are watching over me, you are blessing me, you are keeping me, you are guarding me, you are guiding me. There's so many things to be thankful for. The question is, are you aware of it? Or have you become so engrossed in the world's way of thinking that you think that because you serve God, you are entitled to get all these things? My friend, I say again, you are entitled to nothing. But God, in His infinite wisdom and in His infinite goodness, gives you every good thing that you have today. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Have you said thank you to, your, to God for your life? Have you said thank you for the area you're in right now? Have you expressed gratitude to God that He is with you every step of the way? Friends, let us not be like the ten lepers who just left Jesus by the wayside. Let us be that one who fell at his face, fell on his face and fell at his feet, giving God thanks. Because that is an incredible position to be in. Because you're not focused on the things that God has given to you. You're more focused on the God who gives you everything. Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. I can tell you that one person that went back to Jesus definitely got more than the other, ten, uh, than the other nine because he recognized that it is only because of his Savior that he is well. And if I stick with him, everything will be all right. Not because I can get stuff from him, but simply because of who he is. The author and finisher of our faith God Almighty, who calls us his friends. Let us give thanks to God every moment of every day. And you will watch how you start seeing how good God is, even in the smallest areas of life.